What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for clicking. So I was talking to a friend last week and I realized that I think we're sleeping on a Rolex model. Right now in the first week of December, watch prices are crazy high on the second hand. If you go to an AD, the display cases are empty. In spite of all that, I think there's a great buy out there right now. Jay, thanks so much for the video idea. In this video, I'm gonna reveal what watch I'm talking about. I'm gonna go into the details of why I think it's a great buy right now. And then finally, I'll score it based on the metrics that we've scored watches on before and rate it overall on the chart. One thing I'm gonna change about the rating system is I'm gonna change the value resale value into two categories. It'll be current value as the first category, and then the second category is gonna be future value slash collectability. Thank you, Evan H, that's a great idea, and I'm gonna start doing that. So I'm not gonna make you wait until the end of the video. The watch I'm talking about that I think we're sleeping on is the 40 millimeter Blue Submariner two-tone with the gold. It's the 116613 LB. Yes, I know it's a Submariner. You guys know my thoughts about the plain black Submariner. I don't like it. But this one has a blue dial, that beautiful blue sunburst dial. You combine that with that 18 karat yellow gold two-tone, I think you've got yourself a winner. And normally I don't like two-tone watches. I think they look kind of weird. And if you're like me and you only have stainless steel sport models, I think this is a great watch to up your game for formal occasions. With that said, I also would have no problem rocking this watch with jeans and a t-shirt. So why else do I like this watch? The value. If you do some research, you'll find that the new 41 millimeter version of this watch is trading on the second hand for around 17 or $18,000. The retail price is 14.3. A little bit too much difference for my liking from the retail to the secondary price. I'm not comfortable paying that much more. But if you go back to last year's 40 millimeter version, the watch we're talking about now, the retail price was 13,000 and right now it's trading in around the $14,000 range. So about $1,000 or so difference, I'm okay with that premium and I think that makes this watch a great value. So a few cons, obviously this isn't the latest and greatest version. Aesthetically, I do like the 41 millimeter version a little bit better. Now looking at the two watches, I really can't tell the difference with the case size. The only thing I can notice is that the lugs are a little bit different. The new 41 millimeter version has the lugs tapered in a little bit to match the size of the bracelet. Whereas the old version has the lugs sticking out a little bit more. And when you pair that with a relatively narrow bracelet, there's a little bit of a disconnect between the lugs and that first link of the bracelet. Another con is that it uses the 3135 movement instead of the new 3235 movement. The main difference here is the power reserve. The new power reserve is around 70 hours, whereas the old one, the one we're talking about, is 48 hours. Is that a big difference? Well, if you're like me and you've just got a couple watches and you rotate between one and the other, it's never gonna run out of power anyways. And if and when I get a third watch, I'll just put that third watch on a winder. So if you wear your watches like I do, it doesn't make a big difference. With all that said, I think you're getting a great value for a great watch. I feel like a lot of people aren't paying attention to this watch right now. You're paying close to retail for a fantastic watch. Now, let's move on to the second part of this video where I give a score and rate each aspect of the watch as we have before. So, the score for the 116613 LB. First, we start with history. Now the history here is gonna be the same score as the history when I rated my Skydweller because Rolex's history is Rolex's history. Here we give the score of 9.5 out of a possible 10. Next, we move on to movement, technology, innovation. So obviously we're talking about the 3135 movement, which is not the latest and greatest, but it is tried and true. It's a very robust movement. It's used in many different watches and it's been around for 20 years but we're not rating the movement here, we're rating the entire watch. I'm not knocking it, but the Submariner is kind of a basic watch. You have to factor in the robust movement, you have to factor in how accurate these things are, and overall, I'm gonna give this category a seven out of 10. Next category, design and finishing. Now, this one's a little bit tough for me because how do I rate a watch that's relatively simple, but at the same time, is timeless and iconic for Rolex. I mean, I think most people, when they say Rolex, they think of the Submariner. Now, if we specifically focus in on this watch 
in that beautiful blue sunburst dial matched with the 18 karat gold two-tone, I think I'm gonna give this a 7.5 out of a possible 10. Next category is current value. If you remember before, I rated the value based on retail price. Obviously you can't buy this watch at retail price anymore, so I have to go with market price. So what are we talking about? We're talking about $14,000 for a two-tone Cerachrome Blue Sunburst Style Submariner. It's beautiful, it's iconic, it's accurate, which you guys know holds a special place in my heart, accuracy of a watch, and at a relatively decent price at $14,000. I'm gonna give the score here an eight out of 10. Now, the last category is future value of this watch. I think the main thing here to point out is that this is such an iconic watch. Technically, it is discontinued, but in 20 years, I don't think people are gonna care that this is a discontinued watch right now. If I had to take it a step further, I would guess that the new 41 millimeter version will also be discontinued in 20 years. If this was me 20 years from now as a collector, I would like the 41 millimeter version better than the 40 millimeter version for the reasons I've stated. With that said, and also factoring in that this is a Rolex and that there's probably a 90% chance that this value will increase, I'm gonna give the score here an eight out of 10. So if we fill in what we talked about, movement technology innovation, seven, design finishing, 7.5, current value and future value being an eight, we get a score of 40 out of a possible 50. If we go back to the Sky Dweller and talk about the future value and collectability, I think this is a classic design. I think this is one of the most innovative pieces out there. Future value, I'm gonna give this a 9.5 for a total of 46.5 out of 50. If we go back to the future value collectability of the Grand Seiko SBGD201, this is a fantastic watch. Unfortunately, the retail price of this thing is $50,000. Is this gonna retain its value in the future? Well, it's a beautiful piece. It's platinum. It's got that awesome power reserve I'm going to give the future value an 8 out of 10 for 37.5 out of a possible 50. So if we look at our running total, our Submariner falls right in the middle here, 40 out of a possible 50. Under the Rolex Skydweller, but above the Grand Seiko. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If this watch wasn't on your radar before, hopefully it gives you something to think about. Also, I hope you agree with the scores I gave. If you don't, please leave a comment down below. Obviously, I take all your comments into consideration when I make my next video. So thank you so much for that. Finally, my niece Maggie has something to say to you. Yeah. Please like and subscribe. Please like and subscribe. Good girl. That's right, I bribe my nieces to solicit likes and subscribes from you. If her charm works, make sure you hit those buttons. Finally, I made a second YouTube channel. It has nothing to do with watches, more about life lessons, more of a personal blog for me. So if you're interested, link down below. Feel free to subscribe to that channel as well. With all that said, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.